Or where'd they come from? Mm -hmm. We commanded. Where the heck is this other guy? I hope I'm not treading on people. Sing. I'm not gonna sing. How many people are we talking? I don't know. I don't even know where they've gone. Hey? Eh? I don't even know where they've gone. There it is, Brian. Oh, good evening, Brian. How are you? Apparently you're on the trail of a notorious killer, is that correct? He's a what? Killer, is he? Yeah. Killed a copper. Did you kill a police officer? Grandson. Well, you've got a grandson. Well, Brian, I'll introduce myself. I'm Sharon, and this is Scary Scooby Peter. We've um, come just to say good evening to you. Is there anything you'd like to say? I was just at where you lost your life, where you were executed. I would have seen the, the cell they put you in. I was in the room where you took your last breath. Can you tell us what that's like, Brian? What's that? Phone. Now we've got a, a K2 meter here. If you could flash the lights on it to let us know that you're there would be fantastic. Um, doggy door. I come and go. You come and go? Be careful. Oh, what? Well, that's lovely when you got people there. Yeah. Is Maz alright? Yeah, I'd say so. Maz is part where Eric is. Yeah, but you can't see Maz. No. Is she locked? Yeah. It's all right, everybody. We're just, if you wonder why I'm a bit cautious is there's people walking around in the graveyard and it's dark, so never can be too cautious. Oh, Brian, are you going to speak to us? I mean, we're, we're going around to the, the grave sites of the notorious killers to give them a chance to speak. Karma. And what are we going to get karma for? Or what was karma? When I was in the prison today, I had to say to the spirits, come on with these one words. And I was in the lunatic asylum as well. And I said to them there too, I said, just these one words don't help us to communicate. So you got day trip out from the lunatic asylum, did you? Oh, did, was he in there? No, you. You said I was in the, the, the lunatic asylum. <laughs> yeah, I was in the lunatic asylum. And yeah, I'm on my day. <laughs> my, my, well, my, it's actually night time now, so I'm on my evening. So you're on a day pass, but you haven't gone back yet? No, I haven't. So did you help build the lunatic asylum, Brian? No, it was before his you, time. Oh, it was before his time, was yeah, it? Yeah, he got executed. Did you ever go about nine months before Eric. Oh, okay. Did you ever go in there, Brian? Because I was listening to some of it today and they said that the, the prisoners would go in and out of the lunatic asylum from lunatic asylum to jail to lunatic asylum. Is that correct, Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Because apparently in the cells you would go mad. And, then, and I saw okay. I saw those tiny cells. They'd be enough to make you go nuts. And then the lunatic asylum would say, no, you're just a, a mean, horrible person and send you back to prison. Mm-hmm. Well, 
It seems like that Brian doesn't want to speak to us tonight. Oh, we've got to move on because I've got to... Thank you. Skip. Oh, well, thank you. I think he's saying thank you. You're not going to talk to him. Oh, he's saying that you don't want to speak. If you don't want to speak to us, please say so. Or if it's easier, there's a meter there. If you can make it flash if you want to speak to us and not if you don't. It's flashed anyway. Which I don't get because there's nothing electrical around to create an electro electromagnetic field. Well, you're in a cemetery, aren't you? Doesn't just take him. Oh, well, Brian, well, we'll leave you to it. Obviously, you don't feel like speaking tonight. But thank you very much for your time. It's a wonder we didn't get relative. Right. Oh. I can't. Oh. V? Very, very interesting. Yeah. All right, then, Brian. I don't know if Thank we're going to you. come back. Yeah, we might pop back. Thank you very much, Brian. Yeah, have a good night. Who's this one? Not know. feeling well. Oh. Who's not feeling well? Is Brian not feeling well? Can you help me? Right. Yes. Who are you? He's an escape person. No, no, the, well, someone's crying out for help. Said so wasn't feeling well, now saying that they need help. Who are you? If you can let me know, your, if you can let us know your name, we can come over to you. So Joseph, what do you prefer to go by? Joseph, Joe, Moon Dive. Yeah, this, this is another murderer, is it? Well, it's another criminal. Oh. He um he actually did help build um Fremantle Prison and I assume um the F Lunatic Asylum. Oh, very interesting. He died at um the Lunatic Asylum. Oh, so he may have been someone we spoke to earlier. What was his name? Joseph. Joseph. Moondine oh. Joe. Joseph John's criminal career began in 1849 when he was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment in Wales for stealing food. Four years later, he headed for... Fremantle Where are we? ...for Fremantle on the convict transport... Died. ...Pinees as a ticket of leave prisoner. After a few years, John went to Moondine Springs near 2J, where he rounded up stray horses for a fee. Arrested for stealing a horse, he escaped from the lockup on the horse. He was accused of stealing, using the magistrate's saddle and bridle. John's became known as Moondine Joe. What was that? No, no idea. I didn't hear anything. And his life became a cycle of escapes and recaptures. His most famous escape was from a specially strengthened cell at Fremantle Prison. In later years, Moondine Joe married a young widow and kept out of prison. In 1900, he was found to be unsound mind How many? of unsound mind and died at the Fremantle Lunatic Asylum. The inscription on his tombstone, Rudid is Welsh, meaning freedom. Yeah. Where's his fucking... I swore. Is that what that is? Okay, and he's got flowers. Oh, so he has family. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. It's a reasonable um, grave. Well, he's not a murderer, is he? No, but... And we've also got to remember, too, that back in those days... They, Dirty. They 
It is a bit dirty. Dirty. Yeah, it was. They got done for petty crime too. But he helped build Fremantle Prison and the Lunatic Asylum. You know, he's um, a decent person. Yeah. All right, Moondine. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Spent the afternoon at Fremantle Prison. Spent a lot of time in the convict section. It's very interesting. Not a nice place to be locked up, but very small cells. Did you spend very long there? Running. Did that say running? Yeah. Oh, you were running from there, maybe. And apparently you passed away in, in the lunatic asylum. Well, that's not a nice place to call it. What was it called? It was 73. Yeah, but it's horrible to call it a lunatic asylum. But I guess that's what it was called. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Joseph. And... You have a good evening. Thank you very much for helping to build some beautiful places here in Perth to look at. The um, a Lunatic Asylum, I was there earlier today and it's quite a beautiful place. Warm. So, I'm warm. Was, I put extra clothes on. Yeah, maybe. Right. But anyway, thank you very much for your time. And we might pop back. Um, infant. Homeless. What infant? In, infant was homeless. What the hell was that? Here. Something's moving outside. What are you saying about an infant that's homeless? or whoever's saying something, if you can please explain. Blue. Did I see your cell today? Is that the one that you escaped from, the one that was lined in with Jarrah? He told me. Who told you? Oh. Very churchy. Is that you, Joseph? If you could please explain, because it's very hard when we just get one word to be able to understand what you're trying to say. And we love to chat. They're talking about blue, the blue around the outside of the trail. What happened to me? Well, I'm not sure. Does it say, Bob? He died at, in Fremantle Lunatic Asylum. Apparently, he just it? says he was found of unsound, unsound mind. Oh. I mean, it could be for any reason. Yeah. And it says died. Um, it didn't say he was um, executed killed. or anything. Yeah. I'm sorry, Joseph. We don't know what you died from. Oh, excuse me for yawning. Listen. What are you then? No tired. Well, we're listening. At Tell least... us something. Yeah. Command. What are you commanding? So what was? Joseph, do you mind if we put the K2 meter on your gravestone? 
Is that okay? Not on the gravestone. So it's away from that. I'm just going to see what it does. Oh, we can't see it like this. What's no? that? Is that a spider? Uh -huh. Oh, Joseph. I, I do apologise. I normally introduce ourselves. I'm Sharon and this is Scary Scooby Peter. He has a nickname like you, Scary Scooby. And we've put this K2 meter on your grave there that's got lights. Could you light it up for us, please? And I can't see if that's lighting up or not. Oh, Lady. Oh, you are making it flash. Well, thank you very much. Well, that's freaky because that is flashing. Undecided. It is flashing. Thank you very much, Joseph. It's very nice to have contact with you. And we're just walking through the cemetery after going to the prison and doing the trial and speaking to interesting spirits. I'd like to give you a voice. I'm in pain. Well, you were in pain when you were at the lunatic asylum. I'm sorry for that. What was your wife's name? It's hard to communicate. Could you make the K2 meters flash again? You see the coloured lights at the top there? If you can make them flash for us, could you use your energy? He died in 1900. I don't, he probably doesn't know about electricity and lights. No, you, I, I guess she doesn't. Leave me alone. Oh. Give us a couple of flashes and we'll leave you alone then. Now he's going to be ignorant. <laughs> Probably had enough. All right, well, we will leave you alone and we'll say goodbye. But thank you very much for chatting with us. And you have a, well, a lovely evening, but thank you for your time. Goodbye.